So I am so excited that it is stewardship season. I didn't have any noisemakers at my house, but I did. I just did my hand, it's fine. Um, I, for real, it's super cool. Every week that we read all these great stories in scripture about these people who spoke with God or led God's armies or ate dinner with Jesus or were just as messy as we are and how God transformed them all. It's exciting. I've been sitting on the edge of my seat thinking, okay, what's next, God? Guess what? It's our turn. Today, Stewardship in Gathering Sunday, we get to respond to these great stories. We get to do something about this faith that we claim. Isn't that exciting? Okay. But really, though, I know a lot of preachers begin these kinds of sermons with, so it's stewardship season, right? Because we're a little uncomfortable, feels like we're begging or we're greedy or we just don't talk about money that much. So it feels kind of awkward. I tell you what, I am legitimately excited when it's stewardship season every time because this season is exactly what our faith is about. It's not about who goes to heaven. It's not about how many people we get in the doors every Sunday or whether we can recite every line of the Apostles' Creed and believe it. No, Christianity is about our response to what God has already done. God is the first mover, if you will. God does a thing like, I don't know, create the universe, love us, and then turns to us with this big, ta-da, check it out, what do you think? And then waits for our response. So do we meet that with silence? or by rolling up our sleeves and jumping in. Back in the day when I taught confirmation at Redeemer Episcopal Church, I can't tell you how many of those students' parents said to them, I know you don't like church, just get confirmed and then you don't have to go anymore. Not to throw them under the bus, but friends, that is the literal opposite of what confirmation is. Confirmation is a confirming of our faith, a moment when you say, yes, more please. Are you ready? Are you excited? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there is definitely guilt tripping in scripture and it cracks me up every time I read it. But honestly, scripture is more about an invitation. It's more you are cordially invited to than it is all staff report to the office for a mandatory meeting. It's the difference between we get to and we have to. I have to go to work. I get to go to work. I have to go buy my friend a birthday gift. I get to go buy my friend a birthday gift. I have to write my representatives about all this stuff they're doing. I get to write to my representatives. I have to fill out my pledge card for church. I get to fill out my pledge card for church. Now, I don't mean this as sort of a fake kind of like toxic positivity. Isn't it so wonderful that I get to do this awful difficult thing? God is so good. No, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what God is about. I mean that this too is an invitation. What is in your lives that simply shifting your language just a little bit can remind you what a gift it is. I get to dig out the edge of my flower beds in my backyard. <laughs> it's hot and sweaty work. Makes my soul breathe deeper, though, when I'm out there. And it makes my yard look so clean and finished, you know? I get to hang out with street preachers on campus and students who think that we are encouraging sin at the Edge House. And those conversations can be stressful, but more often they're offering an open space to learn, to share, to connect. Students at the Edge House get to bring their whole selves, their, their nerdiness, their gender, their questions, their desire to heal. 
It's hard work to be that vulnerable. It's hard work to be radically hospitable, but it is good. They get to do that. In the reading from Acts today, the Apostle Paul has a vision of a man from Macedonia pleading for him to go and help them. Macedonia was very much not part of Israel, not part of the typical round of locations Paul was expecting to visit at that point. They were outsiders, foreigners, unknown. This is not new. Scripture is rife with God calling folks to those same kinds of people who are not in the in-group. God is asking Paul, who's not currently being welcomed in? Go to them. And Paul goes. My pastor friend Phil uh, said this about the Acts reading this week. He said, the love and the work of Jesus draw us into relationship with people outside of our culture, and they enable us to see them as beloved and faithful when our tendency might be to circle the wagons and keep our love and friendship within known circles. And then he said, about the shooter in Buffalo, he said, his ideology is racist, anti-immigrant, and based on a protectionism turned violent a fear of the other that turns to loathing. Paul's response to the call to Macedonia, his response to that call, and the respect that he shows the ones who he encounters are polar opposites of that violence. And they are rooted and grounded in the power of Jesus. We are meant to be rooted in the power of Jesus, responding to the heartbreak of the world and to the creativity and the delight of the world by loving people, all the people, every stinking one of them, and loving them actively, we get to. Last week we heard that weird story in Acts of Peter's vision with the animals and the sheep coming down from heaven, which, side note, this is another one of those hilarious bits of scripture that maybe you don't realize is hilarious. It's told twice. Like literally back to back, it's told twice, and it's this weird vision, and Peter's like, "Uh? (laughs) I don't know, what am I supposed to do? And we're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Anyway, we have this weird story, and God says, do not call profane what I have called holy. And this week, Acts calls us to put that into practice. Who or what have we called profane that God is calling us to love? like the people in Macedonia. Martin Luther describes this response to God as sanctification. Arthur Ashe, the tennis player, said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Cornel West says, justice is what love looks like in public. And Jesus said, with a bit of a paraphrase, you get to do this! Welcome! Basically, it's our turn. Back in college, I helped out a bit with a fledgling comedy improv troupe. I did not perform, I just helped. One of the first rules of improv, whether it's comedic or dramatic, is never to say no to an idea that's been said on the stage. Instead, you do a sort of, yes, and? So we keep adding, we keep playing with the ideas that are already out there. And this is what we're talking about with stewardship. In talking about giving money and time to the church, We look at God's fingerprints on the world around us and we say, yes, and? Look, none of you have to fill out your pledge cards. Council people, don't panic. (laughs) None of you have to fill out your pledge cards. We will be fine because church is community. It's not the furnace, it's not the roof, it's not even the pastor's. At the Edge House, we say, all may, some should, none must. All may, some should, none must. None of you have to do it. Some of you should. I don't know. (laughs) Got to examine your own self for that. And all of us are invited to do it. All of us are asked to participate in all these exciting things that God's already doing. It's meant to be fun. 
What are you delighted by right now? Your kids, your partner, your friends, your job, your yard? Maybe not right now with the rain, <laughs> don't know. Maybe there's a little kid in the preschool that you see wandering about who does a little dance or something and you're just like, that guy! I'm delighted by that guy. That the Edge House exists for so many students, that the music here at Good Shepherd is so wonderful, or our Habitat and Taft and Stephen Ministers and Kids Connect Ministries. What are you delighted by and feel like you get to be a part of? Despite the miserable events of the world, whether it's Buffalo or Ukraine or Washington or here in Cincinnati, despite or even because of those things, we have the opportunity to participate in God's transforming the world. We get to be part of it all. We get to help the hurting and to make a difference and in the process be healed ourselves. So come play in God's sandbox. Come cook for the masses. Come dream up new ways to offer our gifts and money and everything to the world. Jesus said, come and see. Happy stewardship.